Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to inflation, inflation in the UK, and then we'll be finishing off with a summary. So the price of goods and services will rise and fall all the time within an economy. And this is because the market economy is constantly affected by changes in costs and consumer preferences. So let's consider consumer preferences and consider the demand for either standard fruit and tropical fruit. And let's say the demand for standard fruit has fallen and the demand for tropical fruit has fallen. What will happen to the prices of these goods? Well, the price for standard fruit will fall and so the price of tropical fruit will rise. And this is because we are reflecting our demand or consumer preferences in the market and we'll see shifts in demand which will reflect changes in price. So a right shift in demand will cause prices to rise and a left shift in demand will cause prices to fall. So a key macroeconomic indicator to understand what the economy is really doing at any time is inflation. And inflation is the general rise in average prices across the economy. So let's take a look at, say, an inflation rate of 1.6 in 2015. This is going to tell us three different things. First, it's going to prove that there is a price change from 2014. Now, because it's a positive number, it shows that prices have increased by 1.6%. And finally, because our inflation rate is reflective of the price index, and if you want to understand what the price index is, make sure you go to check out that index number video in order to learn how to calculate price level changes from year to year. Because our inflation rate is linked to our index, that means that the average price in the economy has changed as well. And also, one thing to note is that inflation is measured one year to the next. Uh, the Bank of England likes to do quarterly analysis as well to see what the inflation rate is like through the year. However, the inflation rate that matters to us is going to be the one that is year to year. Now, one thing to note is that inflation is not going to be the same as when an individual good or service changes in price within the economy. So suppose that we have 2014 to 2015 and then we're looking at what the price change is where we can see that the price change has been plus 50 pounds therefore we would conclude by saying that the price has increased by 11.1 percent however this is not inflation and this is because we are only considering one good Inflation occurs when most prices are rising by some degree across the whole economy. So we'll see mobile phones increase by 2%. We'll see cars increase by 2.3%. TVs, 2.7%. Makeup, 1.7%. Clothing, 0.6%. If we see this, then we might be thinking that there is some potential for inflation to be occurring. So... The numbers are just potential price increases and it's just to illustrate that there is an increase in the general price level across the economy and not just the price of one product. So the approach to measuring inflation can be done in many different ways and the two methods that we're going to learn about through economics is the consumer price index and the retail price index. So one thing to note is that the retail price index exaggerates inflation a lot more due to including repayments for mortgages and will also include the majority of households so we're just having higher prices as a result of considering something that's a bit more expensive so we're going to see a lot more variability so we can see that they roughly track each other so when one goes up one goes up as well and the other is going down so they are matching each other to some degree but just remember rpi is going to look a lot higher purely because we're considering housing which is a lot more expensive therefore if it's worth more then that's going to reflect quite heavily into our price index okay so now let's talk about inflation in the uk and considering about why governments even care about inflation so governments are going to want to have stable inflation and the reason for this is because it all stems from the government wanting to achieve its macroeconomic objectives now having a stable inflation is going to be very important to an economy Having the inflation rate, say, jump from 5% to 6% and then all the way up to, say, 25% and then down to minus 5%, these are generally undesirable. So if the inflation rate is rising too fast, then this means that the economy cannot adapt quickly enough. So if the price changes, then that means that people in the economy are going to have to adapt to this because the price is going to be a 
information conveyor and therefore people want to change certain things so they'll want to change their own prices they might want to change how much people spend people might decide how much to spend and how much to save and therefore this is going to cause many different problems if our inflation rate is too high now an example of a problem that we have with high inflation is that the value of real incomes will fall unless incomes are increasing with pace of our inflation so in effect governments are trying to achieve stable inflation in order to avoid problems okay so we can see that inflation is related to prices so if we want stable inflation why not have stable prices well that's not going to be necessarily the same as controlling the rate of inflation so what are stable prices well a stable price is where there is a zero annual rate of inflation and this means that the average price level is neither rising or falling from year to year so if we go from 2014 to 2015 to 2016 the price level for our can of coke is still going to be 90p each year and therefore we have a zero percent inflation rate so this is an example of just one good i know that i told you that inflation rate is not with regards to just one product but assume that the coca-cola bottle represents all the goods in the economy and they don't change in price then this will have a zero inflation rate so in the data, a zero inflation rate can be achieved. However, it is very rare. So a couple of occasions in which we have one is around this mark where it's very close to zero. That's also close to zero. That's close to zero. Here it is as well. Uh, but generally, we are not looking for a 0% inflation rate because increasing prices can generally either mean increasing demand. And if there's increasing demand, that stimulates an economy into production. So having a positive inflation rate is a desirable thing for an economy. So in the UK and in many other countries, controlling inflation rate means having a low rate of inflation as opposed to having absolute price stability. So we're looking, we are looking for some positive inflation. However, it's going to be very low and this is going to be more desirable than having a stable or 0% inflation rate as we would have if we had complete price stability. So for the last two decades, the UK government have aimed to achieve a 2% inflation rate. So that is what the UK government has said. This is what low inflation rate is. It's 2%. However, the inflation rate is usually always a little higher or lower than this target. So what is the UK government going to be comfortable with? Well, if our inflation rate target is 2%, then the government and the Bank of England said that we would be comfortable with an inflation rate which is plus or minus 1%, so one up or one down. So our inflation rate can either be 1% lower, so it can be 1%, and it can be higher than 2% by 1%, therefore it could be up to 3%, and the government would be comfortable with this. So our inflation rate target is a bit more variable as it can be higher or lower by 1%. So who is the person responsible for our inflation rate target being at 2%? Well, it's going to be the Bank of England and specifically the MPC and the head of the MPC, who is Mark Carney, and he's also the governor of the Bank of England. And he leads that group, the MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee, who decides the base rate of interest in order to meet that UK target of 2%. So it involves the nine members of the MPC meeting once a month and voting to decide whether or not to change the interest rate. So the Bank of England is going to use the interest rate in order to control our inflation. So occasionally there can be fears that inflation may be negative, And this was the case during the 2008 financial crisis. So prices may become very low, which leads to speculation that there is a stagnant economy. And a stagnant economy is one that is not growing and is not necessarily expressing much confidence in terms of economic growth for the future. So it's showing no activity, it's quite dull and sluggish, so the economy is just not doing very much. It shows a very low level of economic activity and a representation of that is where the inflation rate may be negative. So a negative inflation is also known as deflation, and deflation is a persistent or continuing fall in the average price level. So suppose in 2015 and 2016, we have an inflation index of 100 here, and then we have 97. So we are fixing our base year for our index at 2015. 
So to calculate our inflation rate, we are going to do 97 minus 100 over 100 times by 100. And if you're unsure about the methodology behind calculating the index numbers, then go back and check our video on the price index. So our inflation rate in this case, with moving from 2015 to 2016, is going to be minus 3%. And this is classified as deflation. However, it is important to show that deflation is not to be confused with disinflation. And disinflation is when the rate of inflation is falling, but it is still positive. So let's consider these index numbers for these various years. So the inflation rate from 2015 to 2016 is 100 to 97. Therefore, there's a minus 3%, which is deflation. And then from 2016 to 2017, we've seen an uptake in the inflation, so we've increased by 4%, and then 2017 to 2018, we are at plus 1.98%. So 100 to 97 minus 3%, that is deflation. However, from 2017 to 2018, 4% to 1.9%, this is disinflation. So disinflation is when we have falling levels of inflation rate, however, it's still positive. So the number's smaller, however, it is just going to be lower than the year before and that's called disinflation. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you're looking for an amazing A-level economics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level economics a walk in the park.